going on guys? Welcome back to another video here on the Water Juice channel and welcome back to another episode of the New York Yankees Legends Fantasy Draft Series here on MLB The Show 21 and it's finally time. Year number three is halfway over technically because we are in All-Star Weekend. That's right, the third All-Star Weekend of the series. Can you believe it? Can you believe we've actually done two of these already and now we're on our third one? I've never gone this far in an MLB franchise in the history of the channel. You can go back and look. You can. I've done a year, but I've never done three years. So we are in uncharted territories, boys, and I hope you guys enjoy because this one's gonna be an absolute banger we got the home run derby and the all-star game coming up in this episode make sure to smash that like button notification bell and the subscription button as well join the juice club and let's get into some all-star festivities so as you can see we are a game and a half up on the Rays. at the end of the last episode we actually took over the lead in the al east because of this fantastic month of July that we've had where we only lost two games. We did lose a game to the Rays in the series, but uh, we lost two games actually to them in the, the series to close out June. So that's why we're only a game and a half up on them. And we've also lost one against them in this series right before the All-Star break. So the Rays are sticking around here. We started off slow during the season. You can see we had a lot of L's in the month of May, a horrible month of May. And then in the month of June, we started to come back a little bit more, still a lot of L's. But then in the month of July, we've absolutely killed it so far. And we've taken back our lead on top of the AL East. We got to keep that because it's really just between us and the Rays. The Red Sox are 20 and a half games back. The Blue Jays are 22 and the Orioles are 22 and a half. So they, there's a possibility, I guess, if both of us being the Yankees and Rays, if both of us absolutely just die at the last half of the season there's a chance that one of those teams could could make a run at us but in reality it's really just going to be us and the rays for the division this year so one of the teams is going to be a wild card i i guarantee you that but the other team's going to win the division so i'm hoping it's us because we've won it the first two years we got to keep the, the streak going and win it the next the next year too for three straight years and it's definitely going to be a challenge because the rays seem to have a pretty solid squad but taking a look at some of the stats on the season, Lefty Grove has kind of disappointed me throughout this season. He's coming off of a Cy Young last year, and I was hoping he'd be a little bit more efficient, but a 407 ERA, 9-3, 136 strikeouts, a 1.25 whip. He's He's been good, obviously. Don't get me wrong. He's been good, but I feel like he could be a little bit better like he was last year. Fernando Valzuela, speaking of people who have disappointed me, 9-5, 127 strikeouts, 2.95 ERA is good, especially for a league like this, but a 1.31 whip. Fernando Valzuela might be a one-and-done in New York. Randy Johnson's been absolutely excellent. The big unit has teared it up this year 11 and 2 169 strikeouts 2.69 era 1.20 whip he's been absolutely killing the game cliff lee on the other hand might be out the door 7 and 5 90 strikeouts a 476 era and a 130 whip might be out the door and then we've got why is bob feller in the starting lineup we got to put uh give me mark Pryor back in the lineup i don't know why it keeps putting bob feller in the starting rotation i would put roy oswald in there but He's got a 6.35, and Pryor's got a 4.15 ERA, so I'd rather have Pryor in there. Plus, Pryor last season dominated before his injury, so... And I speculated last episode, towards the end of it, that I think Mark Pryor hasn't fully recovered from his injury, because he had some sort of arm injury, I think, and he hasn't fully recovered from it yet. That's why he's not been doing very well. Moving on to the, uh, the lineup, we've got Joe Morgan hitting 20 home runs, 66 RBIs and a 318 average so far in the first half of the season. Jeter's gone down in overall to an 89. Maybe Jeter's not cut out for the for the big leagues. He's got 23 home runs consistently the first two years and now eight. We do have a backup shortstop in, uh, I guess Jackie Robinson can play shortstop. Can he? I guess, well, he can't play shortstop. I, I thought he could play shortstop. Who can play shortstop? Somebody on this team I know can play shortstop. It might've moved somebody down to the, to the minors. I don't know, but there's some, well, I, I guess A-Rod can play shortstop if we needed him to. And then we got Griffey, who's got 11 home runs, 38 RBI. Speaking of guys who have not had a great season, Ken Griffey Jr. coming off of 37 home runs last year, 116 RBIs, hitting 294 that year, has absolutely just not done that great this year. He's, he's just not been the same kind of guy. 
And then we got Frank Thomas, 29 home runs, 82 RBIs, 308 average. He's been pretty solid, but we might need to move on from Frank Thomas this, this offseason. I don't know. We brought him back. He After this season, he got signed in free agency, if you guys remember, and then I traded for him back. So technically, he's been here for three years, but he, if I wouldn't have traded for him, he would have been gone after the first year. Barry Bonds got 19 home runs, 52 RBIs, 287 average. Barry Bonds definitely could be better. I mean, he hit 40 home runs last year with 125 RBIs, hitting 326 on the season. So Barry Bonds, he's on pace for a good season, but he could be a little bit better. He's got potential to be a lot better. A-Rod, 13 home runs, 54 RBIs, 328 average. He hit 37 last year, 55 the first year in Washington. He's definitely got potential to be better too. He's He's been slacking a little bit. Speaking of guys that have been slacking, Big Poppy. I know I only played him 93 games. That's because I didn't realize he was uh, not playing. So his, his numbers probably could have been a little bit better last year. But this year, 18 home runs, 47 RBIs. Not really producing that, that well. Poppy might be... I'm not going to move on from Poppy, like, trade him, because I'm just that much of a fan of David Ortiz, but I might move him down to, to the minors and bring somebody else up to, to help us out. Another big bat. Speaking of big bats, Sammy Sosa, in his first year in New York, has 18 home runs, 64 RBIs, hitting 287 on the year. He had a fantastic season last year in Philly, hitting 327 with 39 bombs. He needs to get the production up a little bit, and by production, I mean just more home runs, because I know he's got that the pop. He's got the power to be able to do it. He just needs to find his, his swing. And then Johnny Bench, the greatest catcher of all time, has been very productive in the three years that he's, or the two years that he's been here. Uh, 29 home runs, 16 home runs so far this year, hitting 283, the best that he's hit so far in this series. He definitely could be better. That is for sure. He could be better. I just hope that he continues to have a good season because he's had a, a solid start to the year uh, so far. Over on the bench, Jackie Robinson's got a home run with 10 RBIs. He hasn't really had the opportunity to play that much. David Wright's got no home runs, 6 RBIs, 295 average. But he's uh, he's coming off the bench, doesn't really get to play a lot. He probably would be better if he was, if he was starting. And that might be what we do. Maybe we move A-Rod back to shortstop, and we put David Wright at third base, and then we put Jeter on the bench. That could be a possibility. Grady Sizemore, three home runs, six RBIs, 313 average. Joe Maurer, one home run, three RBIs, 1.78 uh, 1, 1 average. Uh, Joe Maurer has really been disappointing for me. I know that he's coming off the bench, like all these other guys, and he doesn't really get the same opportunity as he did in, where was he at? In Seattle? Or, in Seattle, in St. Louis. But he's hasn't really when he's played he hasn't really produced that much uh Ichiro's got a home run four RBIs 219 average he definitely needs to get that average up because this is the lowest he's probably ever had in his career even in the real life Ichiro and so he needs to get that average up I don't really care about the home runs with Ichiro because Ichiro is not about home runs he's about hitting for average he's about getting on base so Ichiro needs to get that average up he needs to get those hits up and I guess if he just plays a little bit more he probably will Maybe we uh, sub him in for a couple of games here and there. So that's the that's how the, the team's looking at the deadline. Or not at the deadline, but at the, the All-Star break. I did put some guys, if you guys remember, I did put some guys on the trade block. I put Lefty Grove on there, and I put Joe Morgan on there. They've got long contracts that they're locked in for a long time, and they're only starting the beginnings of those contracts. And I'm not saying that I'm going to trade these guys at the deadline. I probably am going to trade these guys at the off season in the off season, but I don't, if someone, if one of these teams that's interested, if they offer me a good deal, I may take it. It might be hard to turn those guys down. So especially with the way that they're playing, maybe it would be more so to, hard to turn down Joe Morgan because he's got 20 home runs, 66 RBIs and a 318 average. He's playing pretty well, but if they offer me a good deal, it, it I'll have to definitely think about it. And then speaking of thinking about it, awards frank thomas is currently second in the american league for the mvp we have not won it yet this this uh series george foster won it the first year reggie jackson won it the second year and now george foster might go back and win it again and then we got randy johnson in the running for the cy young hopefully he takes it lefty grows also there at nine and three the batting title could go to todd helton 
the reliever of the year could go to Craig, Krimble, uh, Craig Kimbrell, who won it last year. Then the rookie of the year we don't care about because we don't have a rookie. Barry Bonds won it the first year. George Foster's just killing the game, and he's got the Hank Aaron probably locked up at this point. Gold glove for pitchers, gold gloves all around, and then silver sluggers. We, we're definitely going to win some awards unless we just absolutely die off. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Now, all stars, we could have, we're, we're going to have uh, Randy Johnson as the starter, it looks like. And then we're going to have probably Frank Thomas as the starting first baseman. Joe Morgan as the starting second baseman. Alex Rodriguez will probably make the team. And then we'll have, that's it. So we'll have, what, three starters? Three starters and then A-Rod off the bench. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. But now it's time to see who is in the futures. I don't think we have any futures. I guess we have uh, Juan or Franco, but uh, that's not good. There we go. Let's go to the American. Chase Field. Partly cloudy. Doesn't matter. All right. Do we have anybody here? Oh, we got Daniel Espino. Daniel Espino is on our team. He's 6-2 uh, and two with five saves. Why does he have saves? Why is he, <laughs> why is he pitching in the, in the, the save situations? He's a starting pitcher. We also have Viscano, right? I think we have Viscano. He's got, he's four and two and 12 starts, a 2-2-0 two, two, oh, ERA. Uh, looks like those are the only two pitchers that we have because we don't have DL Hall or Seth Corey. All right, all right. So we got two starting pitchers. We've got Josh Jung, I know that. Josh Jung is here, five home runs, 18 RBIs, 267 average and 75 at bats. Uh, we don't have Bruhan, do we? No, we don't. We don't have Bruhan. We don't have Nick Prado either. I don't think we have Nick. Do we have Nick Prado? I, I don't think we have Nick Prado. Uh, is there anybody else here? No, it looks like those are the only guys that are on our team in the Futures game. So I'm pretty sure Franco was on the, the team one year. How's Franco doing this year? Let me Let me just check. Let me just take a look at how Wander Franco has been doing. Especially, and uh, Hunter Green. Where's Hunter Green at? Shohei is 13-0. Shohei Otani is 13-0 in AAA. <laughs> What's his hitting stats? He doesn't have any. All right, Hunter Green's cold right now. He's 9-2 in 16 starts. He's got a 4.63 ERA. Okay, okay. Not horrible. And then we go to Wander Franco. Where's Wander at? Here he is. Wander is 11 uh, RBIs, 2 home runs, 308 average, 78 at bats, 24 hits, 462 slugging. Ah, could be better. Could be better. He's got the potential. He's 77 overall. I think next year is the year that. Wander makes the the move up to the big leagues. He's been in the triple or he's been in the minors for three years now So I think next year is the year that him and probably Hunter Green come up as well Hunter Green probably ready to come up too. I Don't know if Hunter Green will be in the rotation probably not since he's only 76 overall I'll probably put him in the bullpen uh, Shohei probably deserves to come up too because being 13-0 with 135 strikeouts in triple-a He does have a pretty high ERA, but I think it's time for Shohei to make it to the big leagues too. <laughs> so we'll probably move on from some starting pitchers. I don't know. I don't know if Shohei will be in the rotation. He probably will be. I mean, he's only 86 though. He probably needs some more time. I don't know. That'll be all for, for later. But let's simulate this game. Uh, Yoyas Cespedes sustained an arm injury. Two to three months. Broken arm. Uh, we lost to the Red Sox. Play the home run derby at Chase Field in... Arizona Frank Thomas makes the home run derby so we don't have to pick a random guy we can have we can control uh, Frank Thomas but it's gonna be Lou Gehrig Stan Musial Frank Thomas George Foster Tony Perez Bryce Harper Ronald Cooney Jr. and Pete Alonzo so those are your home run derby participants we have Frank Thomas so let's get into it smash that like button notification bell and the subscription button as well join the juice club hopefully we can bring home some hardware for the New York Yankees Welcome to the Home Run Derby. Eight hitters will battle head-to-head -head in a single elimination bracket. 
In each round, the contestants will be given four minutes to hit as many home runs as possible. If a contestant hits two home runs 440 feet or further, they will earn an additional 30 seconds of bonus time. Whoever hits the most home runs will advance to the next round until one man is crowned champion. Now that the rules are clear, it's time for the Home Run Derby. Hitting All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are not going to watch Pete Alonzo. We are going to next batter. Pete Alonzo got 17 home runs. 17 home runs for Alonzo. Lou Gehrig is up now, and he gets... 18, so he passes Pete Alonzo. The first seed is moving on. Then it's Tony Perez and George Foster, I'm assuming, right? Yes, it is. Tony Perez and George Foster. Who's taking this one? 13 for Tony Perez, not the greatest. George Foster, the leader for the MVP right now. And he hits 14, so we got it done. George Foster and Lou Gehrig. That's a good matchup, actually. And now Bryce Harper is up. He's the one that we're going up against, so hopefully he doesn't hit that many. He hit 23, of course. Of course, he hits 20 effing three home runs. Let's see if I can hit 23. There's one. Two. I need to focus here. There might not be a lot of commentary because I need to focus and move Frank Thomas on to the next round of the home run derby. I'm pretty sure we didn't have... I'm pretty sure we had a guy in the home run derby the first season and he only he didn't get out of the first round, right? And then last year I was uh, I was a different person. I was using a, a random guy. All right, there's another one. Man, Bryce Harper hit 23 in 4 minutes. That's crazy. We've earned the bonus, which is a big W. That's foul. Come on, Thomas. Don't hit him foul. All right, I'm going to hit one more and then call the timeout. Actually, I'm going to hit another one and call the timeout. All right, call the timeout. Get the energy up. It's a good thing we earned the bonus because we're going to need it. Come on, Frankie boy. Oh, that was so in the air. Frank the Tank. We need to get 20 before the time is up, and I don't think we're going to... Why did I have to go up against the guy that hit 23? All right, I hit 17 in four minutes, but now I need to hit a lot more in 20 seconds. And I don't think I'm gonna be doing it. I got so unlucky, bro. 23? I hit 18. Come on, man. How am I supposed to go up against Bryce Harper who hit 23 in four minutes? 4.30 probably, because he had the bonus time. I did the best I could, man. I get so unlucky in these home run derbies, bro. I just get so unlucky. Look at all those home runs that I hit. That would be... I did 18 home runs, which is the best that anyone's done in this the on that other side. Lou Gehrig hit 18 as well. So, how do I get so unlucky where I come up against the six-seeded Bryce Harper who gets, six, who gets 23 home runs? Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Bryce Harper versus Stan Musial. Oh, I cannot believe that, bro. That's so frustrating that I have to go up against a guy who hit 23. Man, I can never win a home run derby. I just can't do it for some reason. I get so close. That was probably my best performance. Lou Gehrig's moving on. He beat George Foster. So... Harper, how many is he going to hit this round? He hit 19 this round, so he still beat me. Even with my 18 in the first round, he still beat me. Against Stan Musial. And Stan hit 20, so he passed Bryce Harper. So it's going to be Garrett versus Musial for the home run derby. Let's, uh, let's fast forward to the next batter here. 
And usual hit 16. How many is Lou Gehrig gonna hit? And now, the challenger in this championship round, number four. He's got one. He's got none. Nah, he's still got one. Gehrig's not up to a great start here. There's two. Still two. Come on, Lou. There's a third one. 448, that's it? He's got the bonus. But he needs to step it up. That was foul. There's a fourth one. I don't know if Lou is going to be able to do this. There's five. There's six. He needs ten more. Well, eleven more, technically. Nope, that was short. Still short. Two minutes left. He's got 30 second bonus time, but I don't know if it's going to matter that much. He needs to hit 11 in basically two minutes. There's seven. Come on, Lou. I know you got it in you. You're the favorite for a reason. There's eight. I don't know if it's gonna happen, boys. He's already under a minute. He's just not getting enough power on him. I think he's tired. I think it's gotten to him. It's not gonna happen, boys. There's no way he can hit this many home runs in 30 seconds. He needs to hit this one for sure. Oh, he didn't take it. He got the bonus time. No, that's not going to happen. Stan Musial is going to be your home run derby champion. There's no way. Just There's not enough amount of time. 11 home runs. He might get one more. He does. He had 12. He just didn't have enough time. He missed a lot of those opportunities early in the, in the four minutes, which kind of sucks for him. I feel bad for him a little bit because he was the favorite, I think. But Stan Musial, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. He's your home run derby champion for 2023. Congratulations to him. He hit 15, 20, and then 16. Uh, yeah, Lou Gehrig was the overall number one seed, so it was a one versus two. I didn't realize that Musial was number two, but the favorite lost. He just didn't didn't get the right uh, amount of power on some of those early swings, so that blows because I probably could have... Actually, I don't know if I would have been able to pass Dan Musial or not, but I, I'd like to get out of the first round. I think I've been in the home run derby now two years, and I've never gotten out of the first round with my guy, so... <laughs> That just blows, but we'll move on. Now we got all-star time. Let's go check out those rosters. All right, so we've got Randy Johnson and Fernando Valzuena. Two pitchers, the one-two right there. That's pretty good. Oops, didn't mean to do that. So we got one and two right there. Then we got Pedro Martinez, Fergie Jenkins, Trevor Bauer, Jamie Barria, Kirby Yates, Raleigh Fingers. We got Mariano. I don't know how. Mariano's had a really bad season this year. I guess he's... He's come up a little bit. He's got a huge ERA. He's kind of he's he's made it better with 22 saves, but he's not had the greatest season. Brad Hand, James uh, Karinchak, I think is how you pronounce that. Karinchik, I don't know. And then Craig Kimbrell. So we have three pitchers as our representatives in the All Star. I'll go over and check the um, the National League real quick. We've got Kurt Schilling, Frank Tanana, uh, Tanana, Tom Glavin, Greg Maddox, Clay, uh, Clayton Kershaw. Darrell Zuninga, Raziel Iglesias, Drew Pomerantz, Ken Gott, Giles, Liam Hendricks, K-Rod, and Eric Gagne. Those are your Ameri or National League pitching representatives. Now we get to... Actually, I probably should just stay over there and do the, the hitting really quickly. Rod Carew, Michael Young, Stan Musial, Lou Gehrig, Hank Aaron, Eddie Matthews, Ronald Cooney Jr., Tony Perez, Pudge, Gary Sanchez, Victor Carantini, Keith Hernandez, Jose Altuve, Hunter Dozier, Cal Ripken Jr., Jimmy Fox, Ralph Kiner, Johnny Damon, Nick Markakis, Mookie Betts. Those are your National League representatives. And now we go over to the good old American League. Uh, I should change this to Overcast because that's what it was originally. Pick Randy Johnson. And now we've got Tony Gwynn, who used to be on our team. Yeah, for the first year. Then last year he was in AAA and we, then we traded him this year. So we got Tony Gwynn, Joe Morgan. So that's four players forced appearing in the all-star game duke snyder george foster frank thomas five mike piazza chipper jones nomar garcia par monte irvin gary carter williams Astu astudia who is this 
Lillian's Astudia. I'm honestly not even sure who you are. He's been on Minnesota the in, like his, for his actual real life career. And then in this series, he's been on Minnesota too. That's weird. Uh, Eddie Murray, DJ LeMay, who Edwin Roja, uh, Rios, Xander Bogarts, Roberto Alomar, Tino Martinez, Mickey Mantle, Bryce Harper, Barry Bonds. So we got six participants in the All-Star game this year. And we've got one starter, the starting pitcher. And then we've got two other starters, Joe Morgan and Frank Thomas. But we knew that we were going to have those guys as the starters too. So I guess it's without further ado, it's time to get into some All-Star game action in Chase Field in Arizona. Let's get to it. MLB The Show has baseball from the Valley of the Sun, Chase Field in Phoenix, the Midsummer Classic between the American League All-Stars and the National League All-Stars. Hi again, everybody. Matt Vaskersian. Welcome to our special coverage of the Major League Baseball All-Star Game here on the show. I'll be joined in a moment by Mark DeRosa and Dan Plesak, but first let's give you a look at this year's American and National League All-Stars as voted on by you, the fans. Final preparations being made down on the field. We've got a fun night in store. It's the Major League All-Star game on the show, and it comes your way next. Chilling out of the 49th state of Alaska is on the mound. What do we need to know here, Danny? Well, Matty V, one of the things, if you like strikeouts, this is the guy you want to watch pitch. Swing and miss stuff, good fastball, a good assortment of breaking pitches, one of the best strikeout pitchers in the game. Of All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. All-star game action for the third time in the series. And I'm going up against Kurt Schilling, the NL starter with Tony Gwynn, somebody that I used to have on the Yankees. That's going to be a grand... Ooh! Ooh, no need for the bare hand. Okay, okay. Now we got Joe Morgan, one of our boys. Ooh, that's not going to drop, is it? Nope, Acuna's got that one. I thought that might have dropped, but I was wrong. I like how we're in Arizona but it's still got the the 2021 all-star game logo the colorado one <laughs> it's been like that for the now three years and they can't for some reason just make a new logo <laughs> so we have to have the colorado one but it's all right we know this place very well because this is where we won our world series last year we clinched the World Series in Arizona at the end of last season, so we know this this ballpark very, very well. Ooh, that curveball had some movement to it. Wow. Okay. George Foster, the leader in the MVP race so far through the first part of the season. That's going to get to right field. Hank Aaron's going to bring it in. I thought it might have dropped behind him, but or in front of him, I guess. And now the big unit, 11 and 2. 11 and 2 with the 269 ERA. The front runner for the Cy Young. Let's see if we can uh, prove to the the whole world that Randy Johnson deserves to be a Cy Young winner. And then we'd have back-to-back uh, -back Cy Young winners on the Yankees. That would be very impressive if we could do that. All right, I'm going to throw a slider early. I don't usually throw sliders early in the count, but I feel like in the All-Star game, might as well try it. Probably should have been a strike, but they call it a ball. It is what it is. That's going to be a strike. And then I'm going to strike him out with this changeup. You just watch. You watch this right now. 
Bull got him. Get out of here. I think that's the guy that barehanded my uh, ground out. Michael Young. Ooh, okay. Uh, splitter action. Let's see if I can strike him out. He chips that one foul. Now it's time for the changeup low and away. He's not going to ever hit this. There's no way. There's just no way he's going to hit this. Or he's not going to swing at it. All right, slider, tighten inside, strikeout. Okay, okay. 2-2, two, two. splitter coming back at you. Ah, oh, he chipped it. Okay, I'm throwing gas. I'm throwing the stinky cheese. I'm throwing it, but I'm throwing it down low. He's not going to hit this. He's not going to expect a four-seamer. And he hit it for a single. Of course he does. Uh, of course he does. He didn't smell nothing. Stan usual. The runner up in the home run derby. Hopefully he doesn't hit a home run against me. That'd be embarrassing. Ooh, that was a nasty change. Nasty change. And then we're going to get him with a slider. He was sitting on fastball for days. He was not expecting a slider at all. Lou Gehrig, the winner of the home run derby. He's got 32 or 30. Is that say 32 or 33? I can't read that. I think it says 33, though. I'm assuming Gehrig's going to have 50 by the season's end, so that's not going to surprise me if he does. And got him with the slider. The slider's nasty, boys. The slider's nasty. You can't compete with it. You just can't do it. Now we got Frank Thomas. Frank the Tank, the starting first baseman for the American League. Ooh, umpire. If you're gonna give me if you're gonna give him that, then you gotta give me the one earlier. It's just fair game. Oh, there we go. That's a base hit. Good job, Frankie. The big hurt. Good job. Getting on base. Now we got Mike Pizza. Ooh, okay. I almost swung at that, actually, which would have been very embarrassing. Come on. Come on, Schilling. Nope, that's not what you want to see. I thought that might have hit me a little bit. It was close. Come on, Schilling. Give me something to swing at. He did, and I ground into a double play because neither of these guys have any speed. <sighs> okay, <laughs> that didn't go very well. That did not go as planned. Chipper Jones. That's a home run. No, it's not. It could have been if I put the hit marker in the right spot. That was a quick inning. That was a very, very quick inning. All right, Hank Aaron used to be a Yankee. Traded him away in the offseason or at the beginning of this. I can't remember when I traded him away. But I, see, that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. If the umpire is going to give Kurt Schilling that call, then you got to give me the same call. That's just fair. That was in the same exact location, just a little bit lower than Kurt Schilling's that he got. And yeah, I get a ball. I got a ball on both of those close calls. And Schilling got a strike. So I guess we know who the umpire is favoring. He must have money on the on the National League to win. So that must be what it is. Splitter down low. Hank Aaron is going to strike out. I know how to strike out Hank Aaron. Boom. Got it. I know these things. I got big brain. Strike out. Eddie Matthews. One of the more dangerous hitters on the National League roster. Let's see if I can strike him out. Ooh, Eddie. What are you sitting on? I don't throw a fastball that fast. Not even a 100 mile on a fastball. Could have, you would have caught up to that. I, what are you? He was sitting on something. He was sitting on a 200 mile an hour fastball. That was disgusting. I don't know what he's thinking on that, but now he's going to strike out. He's going to look embarrassing here. Or he's going to get a hit to left field, and we're going to have to get it. Boom. Good job, Monty. Monty Irvin bringing that one in. Who's up now? Ronald Acuna. Ronald Acuna, who is actually on the Braves, the funny enough. He's actually on the Braves in this series. 
exactly All right, good job giving me that call. Thank you. That's the right call. He chips out on foul. Let's see if he chips this foul or if he strikes out to the splitter. The splitter? Let's go. You can't touch Randy Johnson. The big unit. His big unit slapping you all in the face. Slap, 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 slap the big unit's big unit, baby. All right, Frank Tanana's up. I should probably warm somebody up as well. Let's uh, let's warm up Fernando Valenzuela. No more Garcia Parra. That's a base hit to right field. 71 speed. Not enough to steal. Not on these all-star catchers, that's for sure. Monte Irvin's up to the plate now. I've honestly never used Monte Irvin, so I don't know how good he is. Let's try it out. Is that going to drop? That might drop. That's not going to drop. Hank or anything. Sometimes you get lucky on those, and they, they drop in a, a funny location right in front of the guy, but we didn't get so lucky. We did not get so lucky on that one. All right, come on, Tony. I know you got some power in you. You know you got some pop in you. You played for the Yankees. Boom! <sighs> okay. Okay. That sweeping curve is super slow. That's gonna. That's dropping. That. That's dropping. It is. It's not dropping. It's not dropping. Thought that might have dropped. I was wrong. Joe Morgan. Another man that played for the Yankees and does currently play for the Yankees. Come on. Come on. Feed me, Frank. Boom. There it is. That's a base hit. There we go, JoJo. All right. We got a runner on first and second. Two outs. And here comes Duke. Duke Schneider. 20 home runs so far in the season. About to be 21. No, but that's going to be a run. That's definitely a run. Duke Schneider, baby. I might get Joe Morgan in. No, 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 no. Not going to risk it. Not going to risk it. That would have been pretty crazy. Good job, Duke. He got the RBI. George Foster, the MVP. Well, he, well technically he is an MVP. He won it the first year. But the, the leader for the MVP. Come on, George. George Foster. 30 home runs throughout this first half of the season. A swing and a shot hit down the corner. And nearly a three run. <gasps> that could have been nasty. Absolutely nasty if it was fair. I would have walked out. I would have just walked out because that would have been so nasty. Boom, gotcha. That's a run. That's two runs. Get there, George. Get there, George. Beat it out. <sighs> George. I thought George was going to get it. Tony Perez is up. We did get a run, which is which is nice. Gives Johnson something to work with. Actually, don't give Johnson something to work with because we're supposed to have Fernando Valenzuela. Sorry, Johnson. <laughs> we got Fernando in it. I forgot about that. All right, let's... Go with this and strike him out here. I think I should be able to get him on the circle change. And he didn't know that. No, that, nobody would have fell for that. Not even Helen Keller would have fell for that. That's how bad that was. And okay, somebody could have fell for that, but they didn't. Tony Perez is still good. I think we'll get him with, what's my X pitch? Is it a screwball or something? It is a screwball. Okay, we'll get him with the screwball here. He's not going to expect this. Tony Perez don't see a screwball. Got him! Let's go! Bye bye Tony Perez. Now we got Pudge, another former Yankee. <laughs> We're going to get to the point in this series where everyone in the league is a former Yankee. <laughs> I'm going to have everybody on in the whole MLB at least one year on my team. Rod Carew. Once we finish this at bat, or at least, well, this inning, I should say, then uh, we'll start simulating because, or we'll start skipping around because you guys have seen the full nine-man roster or nine-man uh, lineup. And strikeout. Oh, no, that's a hit to left field. Irvin got it. Let's go. All right, I'll see you guys when something good happens.
Oh, he's out for sure. He's out for sure. Undoubtedly, he's out. We better change that call right now. That boy is out of here. Watch this. Clear. Clearly out. Clearly. Why does that man have a dark face and light arms? I'm terrified by that, but we got it. All right. It worked. Oh, that baby's gone. That baby's gone. Monte Irving. Let's go. Sheesh. That was a dynamite hit. My God, that was crazy. I didn't think it was going to jump off the bat like that. Boom, that thing jumped off the bat. Ooh. Let's go. Taking the lead back, baby. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we enter the ninth. The, bo the bottom of the ninth. Two-run advantage. Let's see if we can close out the All-Star game. I'm hoping that we can. I haven't used Craig Kimball in a long time, so I gotta get used to his pitches. He doesn't have that many pitches, but I gotta get used to him. Gary Sanchez. That's gone. Gary Sanchez just sent that one out the park. Wow, okay. So they're coming back. They are not out of it yet. Jimmy Fox. I did not expect that to happen. There goes a base hit. Okay, okay. I need to focus up here. I need to lock in. They could win it in the bottom of the ninth game. If Victor Car Caratini gets a two-run home run, this game is over. You can't have that. I need a double play here immediately. Immediately. That knuckle curve didn't get you? Oh! Oh, whatever. Oh, I just blew that right by him. I didn't even expect it to be a strikeout. Ronald Acuna definitely can send this one over the park. I don't want him to. Oh, we got him right where we want him. We got him right where we want him. Boom! Let's go! Saving the game. The All-Star game goes to the American League. I need to go back and check those other All-Star Game videos. I'm not sure how many uh, how many victories we have against the National League. Do we have all three, or do we have just two? Do we have one now? Is this the first time we beat them? I don't know. I have to go back and look. Big Ws for the American League. Let's go. Oh, taking a W. Superior League. Ooh, okay, so we just got done with the All-Star game. I was starting to simulate, and the Royals are interested in offering me a trade. Let's take a look. Let's view the offer. So they are offering me Austin Hedges, and they want to give, or they want me to give up Thomas Yabuda, Dylan Batances, and Johnny Cueto for Austin Hedges? I don't even need a catcher, let alone a 30-year-old 80 overall catcher who's got no home runs in 13 games played. This is a horrible trade. Why would they offer this? This is the worst trade I've ever seen in my life. Johnny Cueto, even though hasn't been playing that well, he's 8-1 in AAA. He doesn't get a lot of love, but he's still a good pitcher. Dylan Batances hasn't been doing that great, but I'm not going to trade him away for this. And Thomas Yabuda, I probably would trade away, but... Not for this deal. That's a horrible... No, decline. <laughs> That's a horrible trade for the Royals. I don't know what they're asking for or why they're asking for that, but why would I want 
Why would I want a 30-year-old uh, a 30 30 catcher who doesn't play much? Speaking of big trades, the Diamondbacks just got better. They get Carlos Correa from the Red Sox for Giovanni Gallegos, Rob Ned, and Andrew Velasquez. So two older bullpen guys and then a younger shortstop for a, one of the best shortstops in the game. Okay, interesting trade. Now we've talked about this, how I don't know if I'm going to move anybody at the deadline. I'll take a look, obviously. I'll do my due diligence, but I don't know if there's going to be anybody for me. Billy Hamilton out for one to two weeks. We'll put him on the 10 day. Ricky Henderson's back. The Tigers are interested in offering me a trade. So they want Hoi Jun Park and Israel De La Cruz for David Fletcher. Once again, not one of the positions that I'm seeking, but David Fletcher's 28 years old. He's 86 overall. He's played for Detroit for the past three years, hitting a uh, solid average. Not a lot of home runs. He's not a power guy, it doesn't look like. He's got good vision. He's more of a defensive contact hitter. But for Hoi Jun Park, who is 25, hasn't played a lot in AAA. Does David Fletcher have any options left? He has three options. That's interesting. But I would have to give up my closing pitcher, who I have a lot of faith in. I, I like this guy. I know he's only 59 overall, but I like... He's 24, though. He is... 24. This is actually an interesting trade. This is much better than the trade for uh, the trade that the, the Royals were offering me. The only problem is Park is making 500,000. David Fletch is making 3.2. I don't really hate this deal, to be honest with you. I uh, Do I want to get rid of my closing pitcher? He's really one of my last big assets to trade, and I don't know if I want to give him give him up for David Fletcher. This might be a dumb move, but I think I'm going to decline this. I, th I think I think I'm going to decline this. I like that deal. I'm not saying that I didn't like that deal. It intrigued me, that's for sure. Uh, the Orioles are now offering me. They finally somebody's coming in for a Lefty Grove. But they're giving me just Jared Trout. Let me take a look at Jared Trout. He is 23. He's a B potential, 82 overall. No, this just that's no, that's a no. Uh, we've lost the lead to the Rays because we've gone on a huge losing streak here. There's two more wins. That's a big W. We're half game back of the Rays for the division right now. We may need to make a move. I don't know what move we need to make, but we may need to make something here. Two more big wins against the Braves. That's exactly what we need to put. The Rays also won, so that doesn't help us. But we did lose there. That's not good. Billy Hamilton's no longer injured. We're at the trade deadline. We're a game and a half back. Let me take a look at this Rays roster. Oh, here we go. They're right next to us. Vita Blue, Edgar Martinez, George Foster, Ernie Banks, George Brett, Fergie Jenkins, Paul Canerco, JT Realmuto, Trevor Story. So they had some all-stars. I don't know why this team is so good, though. They have Trevor Story up on the block. David Fletcher's in the trade block again. Trent Grisham and Corey Lee are both in the trade block with Logan Davidson. They got a lot of eight potential guys in the on the trade block for some reason. I don't know. Is there something that I should is there a trade that I should make here? If I look at our squad, what's a weakness that we have? Mark Pryor is definitely a weakness. 7-6. Cliff Lee's more of a weakness. Is there somebody that I could trade Mark Pryor for? I don't want to do this. Maybe I should trade Cliff Lee. Is there a pitcher that's playing really well that I could get for Cliff Lee. How's Johan Santana been doing? He's three and six with a three, nah, Johan's not the move. Johan is not the move, but what about a younger Chris Sale could be the move? No, he's, whoa, he's not the move. He's one and six right now. He is sucking. 
Roger Clemens is 6-6. Six and six. He went 6-19 six and 19 last year. Jacob deGrom, 8-8. Eight and eight. Bauer was just an all-star. This is tricky. Young Zach Greinke, 7-3, not bad. Kurt Schilling was just an all-star. He's got a 258 ERA, 13-5. Uh, I'd have to give up a lot for him. That's probably not the move. What about John Smoltz? He's 7-6 with a 355 ERA. Uh, Sandy Koufax, 5-8. Mike Soroka is 10-4 with a 3-7 ERA. Soroka could be the move. Although we'd be losing a lot of overall because Soroka is only a 94. But he is 24 which is around the same overall as prior. So maybe we switch these, maybe we switch these two. They're, they're interested straight up prior for Soroka. Soroka's got a 370 ERA, 414 ERA with seven and six. I feel like this is a, a better move. Right, this is, this is a better move, right? We're getting a younger, they're the same age. We're getting a less over, uh, is this a better move though? I feel like that's not a better move. Uh, Dontra Willis is not playing really well. Neither is Cole Hamels. A lot of these pitchers are just not playing well. Greg Maddox, 10 and six, ooh. Greg Maddox could be the move. How's Garrett Cole doing? 388. I kind of want to take a look at Greg Maddox. He's making 20 million, which is eight less than prior. He's a 99 overall. He's 10 to 6 with a 280. Pryor's not that not doing that great. And we can do a straight up. A one for one. Is there anybody else that I could throw in? And maybe we could get some more stuff. Nick Markakis, Adam Jones, uh, Trevor Rosenthal doesn't move it at all, Rob Dibble we could get back, is Rob Dibble playing well? He's 0-3 with a, no he's not playing well at all. He is not playing well at all. But Walker Bueller, 7 and 6 with a 358 ERA. 2-3 for Tim Cates. I kind of want to do this this one for one, but I feel like we could get something else. I feel like there's something else here for us. I just gotta find it. What is it? What is it here? Nick Markakis, 22 home runs. He's on the last deal of it, last year of his contract, though. I don't really want to take him up on that. Maybe it's just the one for one. Maybe it's just the one for one. Especially if we can't get Kevin Biggio. I guess we could try to get Kevin Biggio. I could throw in Hoi Jun Park. That gets the deal done. So Mark Pryor and Hoi Jun Park for Greg Maddox and Kevin Biggio. Let's do that deal. I like that. I like that. Now we got to move Kevin Biggio down to AAA. Put him in AAA. That means we have one guy extra on the 40 man because Kevin Biggio is now on the 40 man. So we got to take him off the 40 man. But I want to save before we do that. Uh, and I got to go to the rotation and put Greg Maddox in there now. Now we have a full 99 rotation. Hopefully, Greg Maddox can help us with that. Hopefully, Greg Maddox can help us do that. But I think that's the only trade that I want to make. I think that's the only trade that I that I want to make. All 
All right, let me take a look at some possible trades. Cliff Lee, we could send away for I'm gonna need a 99 if I send him away. Uh, I don't think there's anything else that I wanna do. I think the trades that I made are good enough to get us at least in the playoffs. I, th I think our team is good enough to get us in the playoffs. As long as we win the games against every other team, and we then we we can we can survive against the, the the rays i'm assuming right i think we're good enough i mean look at this team look at the, look at this team look at all these 99s 98s look at all this stuff i mean look at all these 99s and 98s we have i think this team is good enough to do some damage and defend our world series title we are game and a half back i think it's time to simulate through the trade deadline Yankees at 41. Okay, I can't simulate through that. I'll trade. I'll do that at the end once I save and then move him down so that we don't lose Kevin Biggio. So that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching. I think. Let me check really quick. What's the game that we're gonna play in the month of August? We are gonna play. Obviously, we're not gonna play a game in September because we're gonna play the game in October against the Rays because they're the final. Um, they're the final series. And that's probably going to decide the division right there. So in the game, we haven't played a game against the Rangers yet. That might be cool. Uh, or the A's. Or the A's, the Angels. So maybe we play one of those teams against on the road. Right? On the road. Because have we played on the road a lot this year? I don't remember. But I think it'll be fine. Because these games are at home anyway. So we'll probably play one of these games against the Rangers or against the Angels. So be on the lookout for that. But that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching. Make sure to smash that like button, notification bell, and the subscription button as well. Join the Juice Club, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.